Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha. My topic for today is common intention and common object. First of all, it is necessary to understand what is criminal liability. The term criminal liability or criminal responsibility refers to a person's ability to understand his or her conduct at the time of commission of a crime. In other words, what a person is thinking when he commits a crime or what result is anticipated or expected when a crime is committed. In law, crime in terms of commission or omission of criminal act and a mental state is defined, which is popularly known as actus reus or mens rea. And criminal responsibility relates to the mental state that is element of a crime. There are various liabilities under criminal law like individual liability, group liability or vicarious liability. In this particular video, I am giving an emphasis and explaining group liability in which two things are very important to understand to establish a group liability. The first one is common intention and second is common object. So let's have a look on common intention which has been explained under section 34 of IPC. It states that any act done by several person in furtherance of common intention. That means when a criminal act is done by several persons in furtherance of common intention of all, each of such person is liable for that act in the same manner as if it were done by him alone. That means what section 34 of IPC deals with? That means the doing of separate acts similar or diverse by several person if all are done in furtherance of common intention each person is liable for the result of them as if he had done them himself let's have a look on ingredients of section 34 the first one is commission or omission of a criminal act that means According to the composition of this section, it is essential that a criminal act must be done. And the criminal act is commonly known as that act which is prohibited by law and is carried out in violation of the limits prescribed by law is a criminal act. Secondly, prior meeting of minds in furtherance of common intention. This is very important ingredient which is called as prior meeting of mind of all person involved in the act committed. It is essential that the act done by several person should be in furtherance of the common intention of all the persons involved. It may be happened even at the single moment or during the commission of an offense. The third ingredient of section 34 is offense by several person. The criminal act must be done by several persons and common intention is the pre-arranged plan of several person. So the section 34 is only applied when accused is more than one. The next is section 34 is a principle of joint liability which means that section 34 does not create any distinct offense but nearly lays down, lays down principle of joint liability. That means there is not at all any punishment related with section 34. It only helps to lay down a principle of joint liability. Now there is always a confusion that what is the difference between the common intention and a similar intention because it seems and it appears to be almost same. But common intention does not mean a similar intention. Why? Because to constitute common intention, it is necessary that the intention of each of them be known to the rest of them and shared by them. Then only it will be a common intention because it is known and shared by each of them. And section 34, as I already said, that it is only a rule of evidence and does not create a substantive offense like other offenses under IPC. So in, there is a very famous case in which 
the supreme court held that common intention which developed at the spur of the moment is different from the similar intention actuated a number of person at the same time the distinction between the common and similar intention may be fine but is nonetheless a real one and if overlooked may lead to miscarriage of justice so that is why it is important to understand and make out the difference between the common intention and the similar intention further it is said that mere presence of accused together is not sufficient to hold that they share the common intention it may be a similar intention to commit the offense in question it is necessary that the intention of each one of several person be known to each other for constituting a common intention otherwise if the uh, if the various person are standing when a criminal act has been committed it is not at all necessary that all the person who are standing when the when the particular act illegal act is committed are having a common intention maybe only few of the person have shared the knowledge and the plan to commit a particular offenses or offense to prove common intention is very tough because it is the mental thinking of the accused at that point of time so it has to be called out from the facts and circumstances of each cases so there is a difference between common intention and similar intention and section 34 can be invoked only when the accused share common intention and not one the similar intention now the second very important term is common object which is section 149 of ipc this section is very important provision with regard to the group liability it is also known as laying down a principle of joint and or vicarious or constructive criminal liability or responsibility it ha- it it is consist of two section the first section is section 141 which defines unlawful assembly for which there should be five or more persons and some common object for which they have made that assembly and the second section holds every member of such assembly guilty of any offense which the members of such assembly knew to be likely to be committed in prosecution of the common object of the assembly so it's better to understand what exactly is section 141 that is unlawful assembly so unlawful assembly is any assembly of five or more person is designated as unlawful assembly if the common object of the person composing that assembly is first to overaw by criminal force or show of criminal force the central or any state government or parliament or the legislature of any state or any public servant in the exercise of the lawful power of such public servant or second to resist the execution of any law or any legal process third to commit any mischief or criminal trespass or other offense fourth by means of criminal force or show of criminal force to any person to take or obtain possession of any property or to deprive any person of the enjoyment of a right of way or of the use of water or other incorporeal rights of which he is in possession or enjoyment or to enforce any right or supposed right and fifth by means of criminal force or show of criminal force to compel any person to do what he is not legally bound to do or to omit to do what he is legally entitled to do that means commission and omission both now the definition of common object which has been defined under section 149 of ipc it defines every member of unlawful assembly guilty of offense committed in prosecution of common object that means if an offense is committed by any member of an unlawful assembly in prosecution of the common object is that 
as of that assembly or such as the members of that assembly knew to be likely to be committed in prosecution of that object every person who at that time of the committing of that offence is a member of same assembly is guilty of that offence ingredients of common object the first one is commission of an offence the first important essential of this section is the commission of an offence by any member of an unlawful assembly that means this section can only be applied if a person of an unlawful assembly committed a crime or commits a crime second one is five or more person member of unlawful assembly that means when the number of the persons reduced from five for trial for the reason that some were acquitted for the charge then the section 141 will become inapplicable but if there is a clear indication that some other unidentified person are involved in the crime then this section can be applied otherwise if there is not more than 5 five or more than 5 person this particular section is inapplicable the third ingredient is in prosecution of common object object means a purpose and it will be common when it is shared by the members of the unlawful assembly so the common object may be formed at any stage by all or few members of the assembly this particular point is different from section 34 which is common intention however common object is entertained in the human mind so there can be no evidence to prove directly about this the fourth one is knowledge of happening of an offence that means the word new is used in second part of section 149 which implies more than possibility but less than might have known that means an offence committed in prosecution of common object would generally be offence which the members of the assembly knew was likely to be committed so the difference between the section 34 and 149 is under section 34 it does not create any specific offence but only lays down the principle of joint criminal liability whereas section 149 creates specific offence and being a member of an unlawful assembly is itself a crime which is punishable under section 143 the second difference is common intention used in section 34 is not defined anywhere in ipc while common object in section 149 must be one of the five ingredients defined in section 145 141 of ipc the third is common intention required prior meeting of mind and unity of intention and overact has been done in furtherance of the common intention of all whereas common object may be formed without prior meeting of mind when the common object of the member of the unlawful assembly is one but intention of participants is different it is only required that criminal act has been done in furtherance of common object the fourth is for invoking section 34 it is sufficient that two or more person were involved however there have to be minimum five person to impose section 149 the fifth one is the crucial factor of section 34 is participation while there is no need of active participation in section 149 of ipc this is all about common intention and common object thank you for watching this is very short notes and if you want a detailed notes you can visit to my website that is priyasapaha.com thank you for watching bye bye